Too many surfers make these same three paddling mistakes and it drives me nuts. Now, it doesn't drive me nuts that they make these mistakes. We all make mistakes in life. It just bothers me that most surfers tend to move on to other aspects of surfing before ever perfecting paddling. This causes a huge problem and you will never guess what the problem is. I'm kidding, you probably already know what it is, but you might not grasp the gravity of the situation. So just sit and think about it for a while. These waves are terrible. And I just realized I left my glasses on for the whole opening scene and I'm not falling on my skateboard again. So I'm just taking them off now. It is what it is. Failing to find the optimal glide point is by far the biggest paddling mistake I see. However, the best way to find the glide point is to fix these two problems first. Oh boy, the legs. I've seen two legs off the board, one leg off, two legs off and kicking, enough with the legs. Try to imagine your legs are the landing gear of an airplane. Crucial while on the runway, but stowed neatly away during flight as to not disrupt the flow of air or water in the case of your legs. The ideal positioning for your legs is to have your knees on the board, but snugged up close to each other. The rest of your legs are either in the air or gently on the back of your board, but just try and keep everything within the rails of your surfboard as best you can. Now, if you're on a short board, your board and legs are pretty much submerged in the water, but the same rules apply. You still wanna snug those knees up close to each other, keep everything thin so the flow of water can flow. Now it's quite easy to spot a new surfer when they paddle because you're gonna see their chin very close to the surfboard and it's a dead giveaway. Not only can this be bad for your neck, it greatly reduces paddling power. What we're looking for is an arched back with your head high up off the board. In this position, your arms have more room to move around and they are paddling at the optimal angle. You can either be too far back on your board, which slows you down, too far forward, which also slows you down, or you could be in the perfect position, which allows your board to glide swiftly across the water. If you're a new surfer, I can almost guarantee you're too far back on your board, as this is common amongst new surfers. To find the optimal glide point, position yourself forward on your board so that when you paddle, you struggle to keep the nose from digging into the water. Now, inch at a time, slowly get farther back on your board until the nose is just barely staying above the water. So control your legs, keep your head and chest high up off the board, and keep the nose of your board just above the water. Perfect all three of these skills before anything else and avoid the huge problem that is low wave count. Good paddlers catch two to three times more waves than your average paddler. So instead of 20 waves in a session, you might catch 40 or even 60. Now multiply that by how many times you surf in a year and it is a snowball effect. Becoming a better paddler makes you a better surfer faster. Now, when it comes to the relationship between paddling and wave count, there is one major area I did not discuss in this video, and that's because I already made a video about it, and that's right here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.